Welcome back, guys. So, like, uh, to the uh, next session. All right. So, um, previously I showed you the uh, post-production techniques related to drums. Okay, a little bit of drum editing and also drum sample replacement. Okay, now. So the next step of the uh, production process is obviously we're going to be recording the bass, okay? And today, right, we've got right the bass player from the band here with us, okay, to sort of a uh, showcase, lah. All right. So you ready for today, man? Okay, cool. First things first, okay. I, I want to sort of explain what is our setup first of all, okay? What we're starting with, obviously, you right, you have the bass, and we are using a uh, Music Man, it's a Sterling Stingray, okay? Depending on what song and depending on what production, the choice of an instrument is also very, very important, okay? Now, um, the Sterling, okay, the Sterling and the Stingray, okay, um, um, being from the Music Man Company. This is has a very very a distinctive tone lah, all right? A stingray has got a very fat, you know, it's got a very fat uh, uh, punchy mid range, and it's it because it comes from the uh, humbucking pickups, you see, all right? So this is very different, all right? For let's say for example a Fender Precision, uh, a P bass, okay, a P bass would be slightly a little bit more rounder sound, and even a P bass would be different from a jazz bass. So you know, jazz bass is again different type of pickups, different style of pickups. Has a different sound, okay. So the choice of bass is very important. Right? It's always, it's always the choice of instrument is very crucial. Uh. For a rock tune, I would say, you know, like for my number one choice, like my favorite bass to record with would be a Fender Precision. A Fender P will cover, I would safely say, you know, 70, 80 percent of the material out there. Right, can be covered by you know having a, a Fender Precision. The rest can be covered by a Fender Fender Jazz, lah. Right, so the stingray here is kind of like a um, souped up, you know. It's like a, it's like a Fender, like a Fender Jazz on 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 steroids, right? Because now this is using a humbucking pickup. Uh, output is also a little bit hotter. Um, but stingray is definitely a very very good choice when it comes to a rock, right? Because of the mid range, it helps it to cut through, right? It's got that, the growl, you know. If you dig in a little bit harder, it's got a very very distinctive uh growl, right? That 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 comes from a from a stingray. Okay, so that's choice of instrument. Okay, so that is going out, right, into a uh, uh, radial JDI, okay? So, as I explained earlier, right, um, DI boxes, you have um, passive, and you also have active DI boxes. So, the radial JDI here is a passive DI. So, radial is great, okay? It's one of the best um, um, DI box brands uh, out there, right? I personally have two of these, okay? So... Because you can you can never have enough, okay? You can have more DIs. DIs, of course, they can vary greatly in quality. There are some DIs which are very cheap. It's like 100 ringgit. Okay? But um, you do get what you pay for, lah, right? So with the DI, what you want, what I'm looking for is I want transparency. I want what is going in, what's being it's supposed to capture, is gonna the same thing is is gonna come out. If your DI is kind of robbing your tone, is kind of sucking your tone, right, or or deter degrading your sound in any way possible, then you know, then it's not a good DI, lah, right? But a great DI will really preserve your tone, right? And uh, and uh, um, um sort of keep it there, right? It will maintain a punch, it keeps, it maintains the clarity, all of it is there. As I mentioned, okay, so the eyes take a uh, high Z, okay, unbalanced signal, in this case the quarter inch coming up from the guitar, and then it outputs it as a uh, low impedance, all right, low Z, um, mic level output. So there's a microphone level, uh, mic XLR cable that's going up, the yellow one. What I'm going to be feeding here are the two preamps up there. So um, what we are using in this case, these are the BAE DMP. So the, the, the BAEs are a, it's a modern day version of the Neve, Neve uh, 1073, okay? So it's a classic mic preampler, okay? So it's outputting there and then from there straight out into my uh, interface via my converters. Okay, now, uh, you can see that I actually have two DIs, right? So simultaneously, okay, coming out from uh, the radial, right? Okay, so the XLR is going to the preamp. So the radial DI also has a through output. So the through output is very versatile, right? So you can use a through output in, uh, let's say in a live situation, the through output is you use to 
sent to the amp right, on stage, the musician's amp, lah, so that they can monitor. Right? So um, the XLR will go to the house, right? it goes to the, the house and then the PA system. The through what will go to the amp so they can monitor through that. Now, um, in other instances, you could also take the through and um, maybe run, of course, to effects. Maybe you have some effects pedals. Maybe you have some other processors or, or, or you know, effects processors. And right, you can um, run it parallel. So you have a clean DI signal that's coming up from the XLR. Then you can run it to whatever effects are to the through. Okay. So I'm sort of taking that concept further. So coming out from the through, I'm actually sending that into another DI, okay? And this one here, this is an Aguilar Tone Hammer. So Aguilar is a company that makes, you know, um, they're famous for making um, bass preamps, okay? All right, um, uh, bass related products are basically. So this is actually their preamp and a DI, right? Uh, into, uh, inside a pedal, right? Inside a kind of a pedal format. So it's really, really nice, really, really nice and hefty. Okay, there you guys, there you guys, you want to take a closer look, you can take a closer look, lah, right? It's got the uh, um, EQ, it's got a mid-range control, and let's say if I want to add like overdrive, yeah, a little bit of saturation, a little bit of overdrive to it, the Tone Hammer can also deliver and, and sort of do that. We'll try it and play around with C, and let's see, we'll see how it sounds, lah, okay, after this, right? So, uh, with for bass, this is currently my approach and my setup, okay? Uh, even back in my studio also, this, that's how I set up for recording bass, right? It's with two DIs. Why no bass amp, you might be asking, right? Okay, how come I don't use a bass amp? Now, um, I used to use a bass amp. I used to have a uh, bass amp. But um, it wasn't giving me what I was achieving, lah. Okay, um, previously I was kind of using a hard key combo. It was a combo amp. Great, great sounding bass amp. Don't 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 get me wrong. It's a great sounding amp. Only thing that is that mm, it tends to sound a bit clean. All right, it's a little bit clean. And uh, if I want something really clean, you know, I already kind of getting it from the DI. You see, right? I, I'm getting it straight from the DI already. So with an Amp, I usually want to look for character. So, um, unless the production calls for it, you know, or the band or the artist has a budget for it, right? Um, I will only use an amp if, let's say, if we can get something like a Ampeg SVT, you know, something with a tube, like a tube, the tube classic, or maybe like an Ampeg B15, which is a uh, which is flip top again. It's it's like a it's a tube based instrument, something that can give some character and you can drive it a little bit and you give you a little bit of character, right? So otherwise, you know, it's kind of redundant for me right to have a clean DI and then a very clean sounding bass amp and miking that up, right? So that is the reason why you don't see me see that I don't use uh, don't don't use a BM in this situation, lah. Okay. And it's also kind of easier and simpler, right? All right, for for you when you when you um, um, go back right to your own home studios back at home, you can always um, employ. Not necessary that you must have a, you know, a big MPEG SVT eight by ten. That is so impractical, right? To 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 have have that right in a in a small in a small room. So, where do I find the character then? Ah, uh, okay, that's where the Aguilar Tone Hammer comes in, right? So the tone hammer, okay, um, being a bass preamp, right, has the EQ controls, also has the uh, that um, the drive control. They call it AGS, right? AGS. Well, they have their own name of calling like they call it adaptive gain something. Okay, I'm not sure exactly what the what the um short the the acronym is, right? But basically, it's an overdrive. So if I want to get character. The Aguilar Tone Hammer gives me that character, you see? It can give me that additional sort of a vibe, a little bit of character which I want. So, having these two, it gives me the best of both worlds, right? It gives me, you're right, a clean DI, which I can always process later down the line. I can always do, I can always reamp it if I want. I can run it to a VST or amp simulator if I want to do it. And I also have another uh, um, signal, right? Um, running through the Aguilar Tone Hammer, which gives me a lot more of the uh, amp like kind of a vibe and character. Lah. So I record both two tracks at, at, at once. So I can always mix and match, blend and balance as much character as one, you know, or, or something as, as clean as possible. 
best of both worlds. Lah. But if you don't have two DIs, if you don't have two, all right, in the end, go with one single good sounding clean DI will also work. Lah, okay? Because again, as I mentioned, there's so many things you can do. You can always take that one track which you record. You can always duplicate it. You can always, again, send it to an amp sim. You can reamp it and, and whatsoever and whatnot. Lah. Okay? Right. So, let's, first of all, let's try, let's try to get some sounds. Okay? Let, let's hear. So, uh, all right. So, play the bass. Just play the part of the song and keep playing. Don't stop. Okay? Right. So, all right. We always tell, tell the musicians, just keep playing okay, while we're getting the tones and getting the levels. All right. Cool. So first of all, let's check the signal level. Okay, so bass guitar going into the, the DI and then going into my interface and converters. All right, so let me just pump this up level-wise a little bit. Okay, cool. All right, sweet. Let's listen to it. So this is just the, the radial alone, right? So this is the clean sound. They're, they're a very fat music man kind of a tone, okay? Okay, try digging a little bit harder because now you're kind of playing with soft, right? Like, um, I need you to play exactly how hard you're going to be playing, right? So, exactly how hard you're playing it. Because it, it doesn't help if you are when... Uh, especially if you're doing sound checks or doing line checks, right? If the musician or singer, when they're testing, you know, they... Hey, hey, test, test, test. And then when they're singing, like, wow! <laughs> then your levels are all gone. Your, it starts clipping, it starts distorting. So always play at the actual dynamics, right? Same, same thing goes where, when we're sound checking the drums and everything. Always, always important for a musician to always check with your real dynamics. If your singer is singing, sing properly, right? Don't, something like that, okay? Just see, let's play it for me. Okay. Okay. Cool. So that is the radio DI. Okay. Let's listen to the uh, Aguilar. Okay. This is slightly scooped. It's got a slightly scooped sound. A little bit more. A little more brightness to it. Okay. Let me just tweak the level here again. Let's Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get a bit of overdrive from the Aguilar. So let me play around with this. All right, that's the... That, of course, instantly made it louder. So let me compensate down so we are listening to the same volume. Let's turn it off. So this is the clean. Okay, I'm just going to back off the gain a little bit. Lah. So I don't want too much overdrive. Just want a little bit of that crunch. Bypass. Okay, right. So now I'm just going to blend in. So this is back to the clean, the radio. So I'm just blending in a little bit of the Aguilar just to give a bit of that mid-range growl to it, okay? So, alright, okay. Thanks, Wayne. So pause for a while. Okay, so as you can see, um... 
um, doing this gives me flexibility. I can have the clean. I can always blend, blend in the dirty. And it's on since it's on separate tracks. I you know I'm not afraid. Like, you know I'm not afraid that I'm overdoing the distortion. For example, okay, right. So if you want to go a little bit overboard, you can if you want to. You have to, you can do it without fear, lah. Right, without being afraid. Right, that you are really messing up because you always have the original clean DI to play with. Okay, so let's uh, just play a little bit more. Let me just double check. One thing, all right. You check, check with the check the phase uh, coherency as well, all right. So let me just check the phase. Ah, okay. So when I flip the phase on one of the inputs, immediately you see it sounds all the mid range gets cancelled out. Yep. So this means that you know the phase relationship is correct, lah. All right. All right. So you flip the face, you hit it, suddenly the sound like the level drop, you know, the sound sound kind of goes away, right? So that's what we're doing. So let's uh let's maybe just do a ready? Should we do a practice run first? Okay. Just do a jam little practice run. Maybe just do like um f until the second chorus maybe and in the meantime also we check the levels lah. Alright, so let me know if you need to hear the bass a bit louder, a little softer, the music volume and, and all that lah. Okay, let's go. Let me check the inputs first of all. Alright. Okay. Right. Let me check the inputs. So base DI should be coming from base DI. Base tone hammer is yes. Okay. Good thing I double checked because it was both getting in from the same input. Okay. So always check. Right. So just jam verse. Here we go. Right from the top. Okay. Just play along. So remember, as I said, even if it's a practice run, just record, right? You never know. One, two, three. Alright, cool, right? So that's just an initial take, okay? So you can sort of uh, see, right? We've recorded these two tracks. The clean DI track, let me zoom it in. You can see, right? 
The clean DI track obviously is going to look a little bit more jagged, right? Because there's no there's no compression or nothing on that. And the one that's going to the uh, Aguilar, you can see because it's going to the overdrive circuitry, it's a little bit more flattened out, lah, right? Because the overdrive is actually kind of compressing it already. Okay, so best of both worlds in this case. Okay, so let me play back, right? Just play back a little bit, just so I can get my balance levels in here. Turn off the clip. Okay, let's fast forward straight away to the song. All right, hang on now. Let me just re-instantiate this e this plugin. It's a little bit of a bug. I have to uh, re you know, I have to reload this plugin. Otherwise, it won't trans trans uh, it won't uh, it won't transmit sound. Alright, okay, cool, right? So checking that my playback level is also okay, lah, right? It's also comfortable, right? Because monitoring is monitoring. Playback, okay, playback is a kind of a different level. Now, uh, um, there are, of course, right, ways of if I were to use direct uh, uh, monitoring within the software, it's also possible that I don't have to go through this length, having to check his playback level, and I have to check my, my playback level also. But um, this is gives me a little bit more flexibility, lah. Okay, all right. So, right, the next thing we're gonna do, okay, we're gonna go for and do for a proper take first. But before a proper take, one thing very very important whenever you're working with um, any kind of string instruments, fretted instruments, bass or guitars, what's that? Check tuning. Check your tuning. Yes, correct. Okay. And you'll be surprised that how many times, right, that uh, this 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 point gets skipped over, right? So often, right? Uh, okay. So, uh, in the meantime, while well, I sort of talk to them, maybe you can just double check your thing first. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Just unplug it and just just straight into the tuner input one. Okay. So. Double check your tuning first, lah. All right, okay. So um, always double check your tuning. I suggest and my recommendation, my advice is right that you always check your tuning not only before the take, but in fact, all right, uh, not just at the start, but every time, every time you stop for a take, okay, you should always double check your tuning. Now you don't assume that your instrument is going to stay in tune throughout the entire uh, session. Okay, because I have seen some some people who think that way. Oh, I, or oh, some have even come earlier, you know, and already tuned the instrument at home. <laughs> you know, they tune the instrument at home. Come to the studio, I said, you know, uh, is the instrument in tune? Check already. Oh, I already tuned at home. You know, no way, man. All right, this is made of wood. Yeah, right? this is a this is a this is a, a um, it's a living, breathing. You know, well, it's wood lah. Okay, technically, it's already dead. Okay. But wood is a very organic substance, right? Your instrument gets affected by temperature, it gets affected by humidity. You, you go in from a different room to a different room temperature, tuning will change because, you know, the, the tension, the neck, everything will, will, will change and alter. So you always need to check, right? So you see, lah, all right, throughout that, every time we take a, take a break, you know, I'll ask you right, to check the tuning, okay? You done already? Okay, cool. So just plug it back into the DI. All right, so couple of pointers as usual when I am uh, looking at my inputs I am uh, once again I'm trying to sort of get an average level of about minus 18 dBFS with peaks maybe it peaks at about minus 12 lah, just to give a little bit of headroom again all this operating level um, uh, the topic about metering about operating level all right will come again in one of our future sessions lah. I will talk a little bit more in detail about that but this is what I'm kind of aiming for between minus 18 to minus 12 okay this kind of uh, this kind of signal level okay so let's go firstly um uh do you need the vocal in this song could we just only listen to maybe just the the drums and a little bit of the rhythm guitar okay all right so the my point of doing this is that um because the vocal especially some of the guy tracks may be a little bit laid back so i actually personally i prefer if it's just the drums alone 
if you just play with the drums alone. But sometimes, you know, for for some musicians, maybe they you know they need a guide lah, right? They still need something to guide them the structure of where where the song goes, where 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 uh, everything goes and all that. You can have some of the guides. I would mute all the unnecessary stuff. So if you have any lead lines, all the all the extra fancy fancy flowery stuff, right? Mute it first. Keep it just to the bare minimum, so that you know, so that the uh, the, the musician knows the structure of the song lah, where it is. Because when you have too many things going on, right? It's actually a distraction. Because what I want him is to really just lock in with the drums, right? Lock in with the tempo of the song. All those guide tracks and whatsoever is gonna be re-recorded later on anyway, right? The vocals, the guide guitar. So the tendency sometimes some musicians will tend to follow the vocal, you know, they listen to lead vocalist, oh, then they follow, right? But if the guide is not tight, it's a bit off, maybe a bit laid back, then you know, then the bass also follows that. So the key thing is to, right, for you, just lock in with the drums lah. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna pump it up a little bit louder, okay? Slightly louder. And a couple of other things that I want to do is uh, I want just again just to make sure that you can follow. Let me mute the synth, the strings, the vocal, the lead guitar, so we only have the guide. And the guide also I'll put it a little bit softer. All right, the guitars. I mean rhythm guitars. Okay, All right. Maybe just a tiny bit of vocal, lah. Right. Let's put it here. Right, just have a little bit of it. Okay, now, uh, very important for for in the rhythm section, right? The rhythm section has to lock together. So, right, drummer and bassist, right? We always we always say the drummer bassist have to be tight, right? Because the foundation of any band, right, would be the two, the drums and bass. The, the thing that really holds the low end, that really holds the groove of, of, of a whole band together would be that. So it's important for, like when we're recording, right, that the bassist, I, I always check with him, that he, he can, right, hear and uh, hear the drums clearly, because that's the most important thing he needs to follow. Okay, uh, kick drum will be very important, but instead of bringing up the level of the kick drum in here, what I'm going to do and what I've actually done is, I just EQ'd it, right? So I have actually just EQ'd the kick drum at about about 4K, 4.6K here, just to bring out the beater, because that's actually the important thing. If you bring up the kick drum to make it a little bit more, if you bring it up louder, then you know all the low end also becomes louder, you see? And then it kind of, you are changing the balance really, especially of the bass, the low end, right? So when the kick, the kick drum, the the bass frequency from the kick drum is, you know, you bring it up, then it's harder to judge the bass. So as a as a as a tip, right? Just EQ, just EQ the kick drum, just bring out the click, uh, the the attack lah, of the beater, all right? So that so that it's easier to hear. So let's go. Let's just jam again, okay? All right, just play it, play your parts that you originally um uh that whatever's your original parts lah. Okay, so listen to the drums, right? I put a click on or so, so, right? so just make sure to maintain, maintain the tempo and the groove. Lah. Okay, let's go for a real take right now. Okay, click on. Ready? Here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four.
driving. Go to the minor key, right? In that mind. It's okay. Mm. One, two, three. Marching bands there. Don't, don't turn the volume down, okay? Just leave the volume full full up. Alright, okay, cool. So just a little warm-up take, alright? So, I mean, uh, after we're done, we start recording, you can turn your volume off. Lah. But remember to turn on, huh? okay? Otherwise, you get those embarrassing situ situations where you play, record, and eh, no sound. Oh, because I forgot to turn the volume up, okay? So those are those those things happen. Lah. Okay, and, and the reason why, okay, um, you don't need to fade out your volume. Okay, in a recording situation, right? Um, same thing. Whenever you have a long sustain, a sustain note, just let it sustain. Okay, because I, as an engineer, right, later on, I will have a lot more control over it. I will fade out the the track. You see, and then I can determine how long it is. But if you already just fade out there, right? Uh, alama, you have no choice lah. You you already stuck with what you have. Okay, so recording is recording. Live situation is live is different. Okay, so. Let me just play back first. So a couple of things, right? Um, I probably want to kind of uh, simplify some of the lines a little bit, okay? Because this is what originally you guys were jamming in the in the in the studio, right? So let's listen back to it. Okay. Now, what do you feel first of all? Are you nervous because because everyone's kind of watching you? Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, everyone, let's make it give it, make it, you know, give it a bit of semangat a bit. Don't don't feel nervous lah, okay? Uh, so uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, okay. But you know lah, right? Some parts are you know, a little bit not so tight, you know, timing wise and all that. Okay, so it's good, right? So it's good, right? Um, um, that the that uh, musician himself knows what is uh, going on. Okay, right? Uh, oh, if you get into the situation where the musician doesn't even realize or want to admit that. <laughs> His playing is off. Okay, that one will be problematic, lah. Okay, but again, it goes back to last week's topic, right? Of knowing the band, of getting to have that relationship with with the band members, so that you can you you can be very open. You can be very very, you know, you you have that trust, you know. So you have that trust that whatever I as a producer say, you know, it's never as it's never comes across as a form of. Criticism or trying to put you down, ah, huh, you like that, you know, you know, I'm the experienced one, you know, you always listen to me or everything like that, right? So it has to get to a point where you know where we're gonna be very very open lah, and we're all very comfortable with with each other. Okay, cool. All right, so relax, man. <laughs> okay, okay, cool. So let me just listen back to it and sort of highlight and sort of just um maybe just pinpoint to you like what are the parts. Okay, let's listen to it. Let's turn off the click first. Don't need to click, all right? Okay, 
Okay, one thing I want to try a little bit different. Okay, because I think in the intro and the chorus is the same pattern, right? So, so what you're doing now is dum dum ba da da dum ba da dum da ba da da dum da da dum dum da 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 dum. Okay, maybe we'll try after this. We'll try a take where it's just focus on just the groove with the with the kick drum. Just focus on locking with the kick drum. So it will be more straighter. Dum, da, bum, dum, da, da, dum. Okay, passing note is okay. Dum, da, bum, bum, bum. So just stick on the D, right? Yeah. Dum, da, dum, dum, D sharp, D, C sharp, B, 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 D, 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 da, da, dum. Okay, that one okay. Some passing notes will be cool. Right, so but not maybe not on every single chord change lah. So bum da 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 ba da 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 Okay, because in the in the demo actually it's fine. I heard that there there was actually fine, right? So just now it was a little bit late, lah. Okay, you can hear the click and the drums everything clearly, right? Okay, yeah, just focus on that. I turn down the vocal a bit more, or do you think if I mute the vocal it's fine? Right, it should be fine, right? Okay, we well, you know the song, what you know. Uh, it's important, though. No? I always tell that if I, if I mute the vocal, you still know where this, where it is, right? Okay, ah, uh, because right. Uh, and this is more for the band, lah. Okay, more for the band. But you guys also, it's important because you all are musicians. So, what if you ever get to a situation where stage, right, you have a show, and the monitoring is so bad, so thorough that you cannot hear your vocalist? Then how? You know, somehow you, right, you as a musician have to autopilot already in these kind of situations. Oh man, I can't hear the vocal. I don't know where it is. So you better know the structure of the song. You don't have to rely on the on your other band to cue you. Is it? You have to really get to a point where it's really autopilot. So you know the you see lah. The more experienced bands, right? Even if the sound system monitoring is crap or something, somehow they will pull it off one, right? Because well, it does come to experience, but it also helps, right, to be able to just know your part. Don't have to rely on that. Okay. As long as you can hear the drums, okay, the <laughs> jalan, okay, okay. So that that's my one of my key point, right? So just just listen again, right? Simple then, yeah. Okay. So at the end, that da 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 da, that one we keep lah, okay, because that's kind of the like a signature kind of a turnaround, we call it a turnaround, right? Because that kind of uh, when the when we hear it, oh, okay, we know that's the end of the chorus, okay? Because that's kind of what's indicating really. So verse is fine, verse simple, simple, um, simple note, um, keep it simple. So don't change that. That's fine. Okay. But the first beat chorus, right? The groove is actually still the same drum wise, so you should keep it simple. Yeah, so don't go into this. Keep it, keep it the same. All right. Maybe make it slightly more active, right? So maybe when it gets to here. All right. Sorry, did I mute you? Are you muted? Oh no, you're not right. I just turn it up lah. Okay, I just turn it up. So just jam along with me. I'm not recording yet. Okay, going into the break chorus. So just go for the kick. Yeah, or maybe even simpler. Try simple. Nah, that's too boring. So stay. 
stick with a bit of a groove. Keep it a bit groovy, not not too not too straight lah. That's very straight really. So a bit muted because you know. Uh, listen to how the drums, okay? Sure, it's very groovy, you know, that part. This verse has got a very groovy uh, beat. It's very nice. So your part needs to complement and needs to match match the groove, right? Not not contradict it. So it has to be groovy, not, not too straight, okay? So that's my, that, that's my second point, lah. all right? Okay. So, in fact, why don't we start by doing this first? Uh, quickly double check the tuning before we go. Just double check the tuning. Okay, so let's just do the intro, verse, and pre-chorus. Yeah. So go before going into the before going to the chorus, we just stop lah. So that last note, just just sustain it there. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, let's go for a take. Here we go. One. Click track first. One. Two. One, two, three, four. Okay, right. Not too short. Now it's too choppy. Now it becomes um, sustain the note. So it's just simplifying the 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 the, the pattern. So instead of dum 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 bum bum, so just keep it keep it keep it uh, simpler. Yeah, yeah. But still have it groovy lah. So same thing. Just keep it keep it simpler. Here we go. Okay, two. One, two, three, go. Is listen to the kick drum. So let's listen to the kick drum in the pre chorus, right? It goes like this. Okay, ready? Listen first, huh? Let's keep that same, same groove. So, pum, 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 pum. That's all. Let's try again. Let's go with the once again uh, intro, verse, and pre chorus. Uh, same place. Let's go for it. Okay, you ready, man? Okay, let's go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Gain down on the angle a lot of it. It's starting to drive a bit too much. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. Right. So obviously at the end you just stop there, lah. Okay. Now. Sometimes uh, in, in a situation, right, uh, it's good for producers, right, to have at least some kind of, uh, uh, if you have a musical background, if you can also play the guitar, the bass and everything, actually it's cool because sometimes it's easier to communicate your ideas that way. Lah. All right, okay, cool. So let's stick back to maybe your original, um, just go with the original pattern, right? 
just go for it lah okay here we go ready rolling go one two one two three four It's a little bit better. Okay, can we just punch in on the pre-chorus? Cause the second the pam 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 was a little bit late lah. Let's just punch in on that. Okay, for bass you can just punch in um you can just punch in on the note itself, right? Uh, with with the with the low frequencies because with drums I always want the drummer to play along. Okay, but um with bass you can just sort of punch in on the note, right? So okay, pre-chorus yeah. Pum, pum, two, three, out. Okay. Okay, let's go. Four bars. One. Ready. Ready. Just a little bit laggy, right? So kick lock in with the bass, kick drum a bit more. Yeah? Yeah. Cause it's more like you were waiting for it, you see. So you have to really know. Alright. Okay. Let's try it. Yeah? Well, same place lah. First two is chorus two chords are okay. The last one. We just punch in on the last one, yeah? Bar 35, let's go. One, two, three, four. Okay, one more, yeah? Same place, okay. If you want to play along, also can lah. You want to jam along, also can. Alright, sometimes, it, sometimes it's easier for some people. Do they prefer to play along? Let them play along lah. Okay, let's go with the chorus. Okay, ready? Chorus here. So just go back with your original pattern. Let's go. One, two, three, four. A bit late, right? You can feel, right? Da -da 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 but I think also because the setup, uh, it makes it a little, a little harder to play, right? A little bit different to play, right? Hmm, because it's different from original feel. So you know, so I guess this is something that we all can also sort of learn, lah. You know, the condition of the instrument, right? Hopefully, if it's set up <laughs> properly, it actually should facilitate the player's playing style and everything. But now, because it's so different now, you know, you're not used to it and it's kind of affecting you during, during, the, during the playing. Lah. Okay, never mind. Let's try. Never mind. We try our best. Okay. Uh, let's try chorus. Okay. One more time.
Oh, that is so much better, man. Okay, right. If we can do something like that, it would be good. Can we punch in on the uh, the slide going up to the G? Okay, here we go. <laughs> I was just seeing if you were going to continue or not, right? Sometimes when you're kind of recording, right? When you're recording and then um, you just observe, right? Always be be observant, okay? Don't don't uh, don't don't always be looking at your screen or so. Learn to read some of the 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 cues, you know, the 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 the, the body language cues from the player. So sometimes if the player keeps going, right, or the singer sometimes keeps singing, right, beyond where you, you ask him to stop. If it sounds good, just let him go, right? You never know, right? It's because sometimes he might be just feeling it, he or she might be just feeling the part, and then, you know, you capture a very good take, right, out of that, because, right, it's not a plan, you see, he, he just, the, the, the singer or the musician just kept playing, right? And so sometimes you get a very natural, a good vibe that way. Okay, uh, where shall we go? Okay, I'll keep this, but can we just try one more take of the whole thing, okay? And then... If you feel like going to the chorus, just go on it, okay? Same place. Okay. Just ignore what I'm doing. Pretend that my hand is not there because what I'm doing is I'm trying to mute uh, the, the ring, you see? All right. one more the slide still a little bit later right so yeah and uh, when it comes to things like slides or that you are you always want to make it sound like you mean it you know it's like you make sure that you know make sure you mean it yeah it's because because with the you want to hear it man so like i said like imagine man 10,000 screaming fans in front of you you make sure you're playing it to that you know that uh, that uh, that girl in the audience or guy, you know, right? Nothing, nothing wrong with that. Okay, <laughs> okay. We we'll try one more. Okay, same place here. Yeah? Wow. <laughs> Good. Okay, cool. Now, for the very last, um, what I can probably do, okay, because I actually have a few takes of the original chorus already, I probably just pick the best one, you know, comp, comp one together, right? So that, because both choruses are the same, right? Yeah. 
Okay, quick sidetrack also, right? Uh, I don't know whether you noticed or not, right? I was, it's already built in habitually into me to, to control S every 30 seconds or even in between. Um, it's become a natural reflex really to control S, control S, control S. So this was taught by me, by my previous mentors, right? So I don't even think about it. It's always if I'm doing something, doing something, my f left hand uh, will just automatically go to control S1. So I don't even think about it. Right, so so because when you save, it'll always save to it, it. Even if you crash or anything like that, you always go back to the same state. You see, you ready? Yeah, let's go. One, two, three, four. Okay, stop. All right, see, I screwed up again because I forgot to arm the track. All right, see? Okay, never mind, let's go. Okay, one more time. Punch in on the, the the B C sharp D again, just on the B C sharp D, yeah. All right. Can be a bit lighter because this part is really light. So dum 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 yes, okay? Yeah. Just one time. God, I will fade out already by then. Okay, let's try it. Eh? Don't don't slide down. Just just keep it. Just sustain it. Okay. I will fade it out, lah. All right. One more time. One more time. Yeah. Dum. Just keep it. Yeah. Just leave it. I will. I will. Sus I will slide. I'll sustain it. Right, okay, that's all we need. Again, in the mix, this one later maybe I'll fade it out, you know, I'll automate it out so I'll be a little bit more precise about the control out of it. Okay, Jom, so next thing will be going to the marching bands there, right? Fun, right? A, a bit, bit shorter, shorter now, just four bars, bars eh? Straight, Straight away. One, two, one, two, three. Okay, right. So on the last G, same thing. Hold it until three, until three. One, two, three, and then stop. Because there you just want the drum feel to right? Okay. Give space for the rest. The the drum is see. So there, silent right? Everyone go silent there. See? Let's try one more. One more take. Can we do one more for safety? Okay. So be careful of the buzz there, lah. Okay. Have to the touch, lah. And I know it's because of the the setup, you see. It's it's become super super sensitive. Let's try it one more time. Same place. One, two, three. Punch in on the on the D, yeah, yeah. That will be 
it's a little easier, la, right? One whole phrase. One, two, three, four. Nice, okay? Exactly. Almost there. So this brings us to last chorus. Are we ready, man? Okay. Let's go. Much better. Okay, cool. Right. Thank you very much. Yay! Woohoo! Okay. Good job over there. All right. Great job. So let me just mute your channels first. Okay. Let me just mute first. Ah. Huh? All right. Okay. All right. Uh, you you sometimes saw when I was engineering what I was doing there just now. Okay. Now um there are some some ways la, of of um, helping. It applies to guitar, so you can use something what we call the uh, fret wraps, right? Actually, or if you go, right, you ask any uh, female member of your family, your sister or your mom or anything, just get a hair scrunchie, right? Will do, okay? Or you yourself go and buy one, lah, right? What? Yeah. <laughs> or a towel or something, handkerchief also can, right? Right, and you can always like do a tie and wrap it up there. But provided that you don't need an open string lah. But in this case, with an open string, right? Uh, again, this was something that I learned and I was taught sometimes. And it's actually very common if you actually see uh, um how some of the videos they do. Uh, sometimes the engineer producer will help to mute, right? So uh, what I was doing, I was trying to mute all the. I was muting all the open strings so that it won't ring, you know, while it's playing lah, right? So that you can concentrate. Uh, I have been in a situation once where uh, it wasn't a bass, it was a guitar part. We needed how many hands? One, two, three. We needed five hands. Five hands to nail this particular part, right? Because uh, the guitarist was doing a, holding the chord, tapping, right? Uh, was it five hands? I uh? can't remember. Tapping and then another person, another band member had to help to mute the mute one of the open strings, right? And uh, I had to do one more because he was tapping this like tapping like that. He had to hold and then tap one more note. The part was like that, so it's like one, two, three, okay, four hands lah. Wasn't five hands lah, right? So it's it's uh it's quite crazy. I have a, I have a video of that somewhere. Uh, so what we're gonna do is uh, just take one final listen. Okay, later on all of this stuff. So some of these parts I can always sort of edit it, you know, and just comp, you know, together to get together some of the parts from the takes that I already have, lah. Right. So let's just do a quick listen with all the guitars, guy vocal, everything. It's good to listen in context, lah. Okay. Here we go.
right, okay? So, what I was doing here, right, while I was listening back is like, I just threw in a bit of, you know, a bit of processing. Um, because what I want to, I want to really sort of hear in context how he's going to sit. So, I'm running into a couple of compressors and everything. And then, you see, when it's, you know, when I really compress the heck out of it and everything, suddenly it kind of seems to sit a little bit better. Right, dynamics wise, because when we record just now, right, we're recording without a compressor, is it? Okay, so uh, when I do it back in my studio, I'm showing you how I'm doing it here, right? Let me just turn it down first, right? So when I was, uh, what I'm doing here is, of course, I'm showing you guys, right, when you record without a without any kind of uh, compressor, So this is straight DI. So obviously, dynamics, all that, everything, right, all the whatever inconsistencies becomes much more obvious, see? right? Uh, but when I usually I record back in my studio, I will usually use a compressor lah, to sort of compress the 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 um uh compress the bass as well. Okay. Now, in certain cases, in certain situations, maybe some DI pedals, some pedals, right? I think your pedal has a, that you use usually has a compressor, right? Yeah. So it it actually it helps to even out all the dynamics when you have a compressor, right? It makes everything it suddenly sound a little bit more smooth, more consistent, all right? So a compressor does help, okay? But if you don't have it, you can always like in this case, record it dry, record it with a DI, no 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 compressor, and then you know. Um, slap on the compressor behind it and just see how it works, lah. Okay, um, working in digital nowadays, okay, we always kind of mix as we go, um, because you don't have to wait until the end of the process. Then only you start mixing. In this situation, I really like to put in and you know and and uh, I like to slap on the compressor on the bass, so I really know how the low end and the bass is gonna sit, lah. Pretty much, okay? So, I'll pretty much leave it on there all the way until even when I'm recording uh, guitars and even when I'm recording vocals, right? Because that really helps me give, a, give an idea of a picture of what the end result should be, okay? So, of course, it's up to your personal preference. Some, some people like to maybe not do anything. They'll just leave it there. But for me, I find it a lot more helpful to already mix as you go along, lah, right? So, that's why I was slapping this on, okay? So let's play a little bit more, the end of the track. Okay, now all of this, right? They actually what you can see behind there is not just one compressor, right? It's actually like there's four compressors in there that I'm kind of using and utilizing. But it's just a rough. I'm just roughly just slapping it on, uh, just to see how you know, just to sort of controlling, control it, right? I will sort of show you a little bit more. This is when, right? This is in week five, lah. Okay, so I'm not gonna cover, go into too much detail of this. All right, so right. Let's take a short break and we'll come back again to sort of wrap up with, you know, uh, a little bit more topics out there. Lah. Okay, man. Thank you.